right here now at um, the um, Brazilian Barracuda. Brazilian Barracuda. That's a good. Okay. So thank you. For I'm, that. I'm Connor Stone. Okay, What's the name? Chigosi. Chigosi. Yeah. Wow. You are Igbo man. Yes. <laughs> uh, Connor Stone. Can you tell me where I come from with that name? Um, Cornerstone. You cannot. No, I can't. No, no. It is not our name. Mm -hmm. uh, I got to know that you are Igbo, man, through just your name. That to tell you how important historical directory mm -hmm. we Africans our name is. Our name have a direction. But it was so sad. We prefer giving our children English, Christian, Islamic. I'm not saying wrong with those names. Right. But we have a name that tell uh, where we come from. Now, if I tell you that I'm Kofi, can you tell me where I come from? Yeah, Ghana. God. Perfect. Let's go. So, you're welcome. Now, the world know this company as Brazilian Barracoon. Why Brazilian Barracoon? That is to say, majority of the slaves take for this compound we are taking to brazil and they were yoruba origin mm -hmm. and today if you go to brazil you still see their traces right uh there's a god among the yorubas called yemeja over there they call it yemeja Eshu, enzu yala karakaraje oshu ozun that to say that they're Yorubas yes. that be moved from this company because all slaves from Africa were taken to different parts of the world, like uh, Bajina, yes. South, yes. South Carolina, uh, Yotunji, you know, and the Caribbean. Yeah, Georgia, yes, Caribbean. Uh, now, most of the Igbo slaves taken along Calabar Boniport, the children to Georgia. There's an island in Georgia called Saint Simon. In the Dubai Creek, one day the Igbo slaves said they won't be a slave in another man's land. What they did, they killed their masters. Seventy of them, in one accord, walk into the ocean and they drown themselves. And before they drown themselves, they were singing in Igbo language that the Goddess River should take them back to their room, home, where they belong. But the letter end up in Georgia water. Okay. Spiritually, that will tell you that their spirit is here. Right. And for vengeance. Yes, now, let's continue. Now, this is Senator of the man that owned this company. Okay. This man too was a victim. At the age of six, he was captured as a slave boy. Okay. And if father him left, was the name given to him by his parent. But today, how come the name changed to be Seriki William Sabas? And that era, then, we have two categories of slaves. A domestic slave that work in their master's house, mm. while the fields work on the farm or on the plantation. A boss or the first master that owned the young as a slave, a black man who lived in the Republic of Daume. The Republic of Daume was changed to Benin from 1975. Yeah, maybe you heard Kotonou yeah, and yeah, yeah. So, but a boss later resold into a white man called William. Mm -hmm. Sam William took him to Brazil, okay. taught him how to read and right. write, which was illegal. Slaves were not meant to be yeah, and the main reason why they don't want to study how to read, they believe that if they were taught how to read, one day they will rise and fight for their rights. But through Mr. William, this man speak English, Dutch, Spanish, and Portuguese, and he could read and he could write as well. But one day, William called him, Come, let me give you your freedom, but you work for me. And he grabbed the power, William set him free. When he left Brazil, he was settled in Lagos, colony. From Lagos Colony, he came out to be set here, but that when he came here, it was the Williams who built this compound in the 1840s. Okay. In the 1895, he became the Seriki Muslimi of Badagi. Because slaves used to be at their masters. Name. That's why he chose to be at them the first master, the second, and the title okay. that he okay. had. That's how they know to be. I think you are getting it. Yeah, getting the point, yeah. Now, before we go, okay. when the European came to Africa, we Africans, we have our own currency. We have our money that we use for buying and selling. Now let me mention, yeah, let me, yeah, we have more than cowry. Oh, let me mention four okay. types of money they use in the olden days in Africa. Yeah. In the olden days, tobacco were used in Africa as money. There's what we call yala salt. I think there's a local government in Cross River known yala. They produce salt. They use salt as money in those yeah. in the olden in those ancient days. Mm -hmm. So we call it yala salt. We are used as in a change as a money. Then there's what we call manila. Manila is like a covering. 
If you look at our 100 and no, yeah. the one that carries our also, you notice a green star. There yes. should be a ring inside, like a server and bronze. It's looking server and bronze. They be turned about you see two here, they want you. What it gives us Manila, our forefather to use Manila, Manila ten as money. Yeah, the last one is called Kauri. Yeah. Yoruba call it Uwey. What do you call it? Do you know the name in Hebrew? I really uh, no, but we know it's a Kauri. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Now, then I said, they don't want to do business with our forefather, with those kind of money that we just mentioned. Yes. Okay. That they will have prepared doing trip then known as trip by batters. They came good for good. So, right on the walls, so the Indian product that we used mm -hmm. in exchange for the state when they arrived. Like the European, we give our forefather an umbrella in a table for 40 human beings uh, as a source. Now, could you believe that up to date we started to serve the umbrella? Even though two years ago, the vice president of Nigeria, Yemi Oshibaji, was here to see the umbrella for 40 human beings. I'm still going to show you the umbrella. Okay. A bottle of whiskey go for 10 human beings as a slave. We have a bottle of 873 from Vienna, Australia, that we show you inside the museum later. This man called Seriki Abbas, when he became the Seriki Muslim, when they want to turban him, that means to crown him so that they put some white something on their hair, they are turban. European that are doing the trade with him, giving this as a gift, while the president giving the brothers as a gift. So we see most of these things that a plate, we call it ceramic bowl. Uh, European give you one plate, you know, ten human beings as a slave then. We see a of sauce holding the plate, I'll show you later. Okay. Mirror and B. Mm -hmm. You can say two slaves. I can say three slaves. Mm -hmm. It depends how you could buy it. Negotiation. And right. negotiate yeah. with European for beans yeah. and mirror. Now then gone, you go for 40 human beings as late that time. Uh, the long cannon gone. When we get to the blockaded slave market, we'll be seeing the cannon. We can see one of the cannon. All right. Now, European will give the the longer cannon gone, they collect 100 human beings as a slave. The shorter one, 40 slave. Now, we Africans, or black man, what do we really do with the guns? Guns? And the cannon guns kill ourselves. So we use it to fight each other. Yeah. So to get more slaves, mm -hmm. to set to repair. We sold ourselves into slavery. Mm -hmm. And it's still happening up to today. today. Now look at these two doors. Have been here since the 1840s. When the compound was being established. It's one of our monuments that people all over the world come around here mm -hmm. to view. Let me let me show you the back of it to see how ancient it is that we use. You can see all these things that they use in the old days. Look at this. You can see. Then when we enter, we show the inches. Okay, this is the inches. Look at the longer inches they use them. What we use now is just the flat, some very flat one like this. You can see the all the inches that they were used to mold the door in the old days. So the door is a monument. It's a big when the compound was being built. Now, out of the 40 rooms that we have in the compound today, 38 rooms we have been occupied by his family, that said the family. Mm -hmm. Now, let's see the two, the government said the family should set aside okay. and see what we have in there. Yes, I have because you know I was. So, the well over there was dug in the 1847 by the slaves. And that's where the slaves drink water from yeah. that time. Okay. Okay. So, but today, the family that lives here today, they don't drink the water. Mm -hmm. They just use it to do to some cook, house um, care, washing, plates, and cook, clothes, and, and all that. Yeah. Okay. Because the water is contaminated in some house, but yeah. still, because they are slaves, that the water they use to drink that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you're welcome. Mm -hmm. So all the 40 rooms that we have in the compound today used to be like a smaller room. Mm -hmm. In there, we are still going there. We call that place Dark Room. Mm -hmm. That's where they kept 40 enslaved Africans. Now, any slave above 25, no, no, above, let's say, above, getting close to 35, 40, mm -hmm. or sick, they call them macros. They don't want such a slave. 
they want a very healthy because their aims and objectives they are going to work with the technician so they want a very healthy. so this is where they will examine them the european will look into their eyes check their decision heal their stomach turn them around to see their feet what they are going to work so we call this place inspection room now right in the inspection room and this is the picture of safety of us and we made a photocopy of some of that thing here. You know, I told her William taught him how to read that right. Right, yeah. And this is him over here. This very umbrella that this slave boy mm -hmm. was carrying on the head of him here. This is the umbrella for 40 you know. mm. This umbrella was made of wool, brown, silk, and cane. Let me show you the cane. Can you see the cane? Mm -hmm. okay. See the cane? So, let me see, let me, uh, let me see, uh, come in. okay, this is what I want, look at the cane, can you see the cane? Yeah. So it's for use with cane, then I use brown, bronze, no, this is a bronze, Abby. is that bronze? Yeah, it's a bronze. They use the bronze to attach to the cane, and you can see the bronze here. So, yes, bronze. so and this umbrella should be like 15 to 70 or 20 kg, do try the weight and see how it is. Damn. It's heavy? Yep. Now, and as heavy and um, this umbrella is, mm -hmm. just a guy called Slater to carry it on the head of him, as you can see in the yep. picture. See. Because of the heaviness, if the umbrella mistakenly drop from the hand of the slave to mm -hmm. the head of the master, the penalty is the death. Mm -hmm. They will behead the slave instantly because slaves were somebody's property. Mm -hmm. And they believe they can do anything they like to their property. Mm -hmm. Now, the question is this. Do you think this is what 40 human beings? No. That to tell you the kind of leaders Africa have been building right from the cradle of Africa. How could they exchange 40 human beings with umbrella. this ordinary umbrella. umbrella? Now, the same umbrella we are showing you. They put this at the anchor okay. of the first slave. Then, or maybe you should experiment. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Let's do that. Go this way. Okay. No, we are not slave, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. okay, we will now put the first one at the anchor. Okay. Or the first slave, then the second slave this way. Now look at this straight metal here. Mm -hmm. you can, can you see this pin hole here? Can you see the hole? Yeah. So they will not pass it right from here to the other end of the slaves. Then this pin over there, they put their padlock here. Mm. We don't have their padlock, really. So they will now yoke that to join two of them together yeah. while working on the plantation, you see. And we have to be in one accord with ourselves. Even though so we'll be having like more sequence, injury. Like a sequence. Yeah, and yes, yeah. we'll be having more injury on our toes. Right. You understand? The steel that is so stubborn. Like fugitive. Fugitive. Yeah. They'll tie the chain around the waist. Of any stubborn mm. because of the heaviness of this chain, it will calm him down so, so that he, yes, yeah, he will yeah, yeah. so that he will be less aggressive fighting. Maybe they will slave. starve him too. Oh, There's those, no food, so he can de definitely, yeah, definitely. Yeah. You are not well felt, yeah. You understand? But still, they still gonna work. This? Yeah, this is another sad one. Uh, we call this thing iron muzzle M U W Z L E. Uh, they use it to prevent the slaves. From communicating mm. or eating or overfed themselves. Because they believe that if the slave were well fed, they will have stamina yeah. to revolt to fight. Yeah, to fight to so you see you understand? So they have to come because food is only once in a day, not good small food mm -hmm. and they drink water. Yeah, like a small in. portion. Yeah, you understand, right. something like that. Yeah. So but the worst one is the one that they will perforate, they'll pierce, they put iron mm -hmm. inside the fire. When it is red, oh, let me do this. Okay, like this iron now. Mm -hmm. No, they put the iron inside the fire. Mm -hmm. You know, when this iron turns red in the, in the, in the funnel, the funnel they, yeah, they bring it out, they draw the lips. Mm -hmm. So they will just, you it know, in. it's very easy to go. Yeah, yeah. You just go straight. Just like piercing an air ring. Yes, yeah. good, good. Yeah. They'll put it here because it's red hot iron. Mm -hmm. So immediately they'll put part lock. So. Terrible. Terrible. Now this box, Yoruba's call this box a potential, I know, 
Potential, no? That means match pox. Okay. I put it me match. Uh, I put it me pox. Mm -hmm. uh, match pox. You know, the pox of match is look like popona like this. Right? So that's what they call apoti ishano. Okay. That's match pox. And we didn't know how many slaves that were used in exchange for this. Okay, for this. Okay. This is where the man that owned the compensation care and kept most of his okay. document. Now let's proceed. <clears throat> now. Now, most of most of our visitors, immediately we open the some of them, they will quickly jump back yeah. because they are scared. Mm -hmm. They thought maybe it's a mummy. It's a oh mummy. yeah. So we are it's just a mummy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, it's all of the mummy. Yeah. What we are just doing here is just a local mannequin. Mm -hmm. We are just show, showcasing the clothes on this local mannequin. Okay. This cloth now is called Regala. It's over two hundred years of age. Yeah. This type of hobby was given to this man by one governor known as Governor Williams, yeah. my brother of Lagos County in 1902. Recognizing this man as a ruler then. Ruler then. Now, that's a movement to the point yeah. of no return. return. Record that movement single file. Now, let's turn around. Now, look at this man here. These, are, these two guys, they are slave raiders. Mm. Their intention is to capture him as a slave. The man, the chief took knife. Stop himself to death. Yeah. Why must he kill himself? Because this man didn't know the implications to be a slave. A slave. That's why I tell her most of the boats that are drowned, even on the slave voyage, some slave will jump into the water the sea. and end it. Or some of them, they will commit suicide, they put strokes on their legs, okay. they prefer to die. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of damage that has been done to Africans. Now, over here, we call these dogs killers' dogs. They are well trained dogs. Any fugitive slave, runaway slave that mm -hmm. try to escape, they release like 20 dogs yeah. to trace them. And if you are walk, what the thing called Django, Django on chain, chain, yes. 20 dogs will go for one slave, they will eat the slave to the pool. Now, over here, slaves bear their master's name. That's why when people come here, I used to tell them, please, let's give our children our African name. names. There is nothing wrong with our yeah. names. Ah, uh, the thing called the root. The guy African name was Kunta Kinte. Kunta Kinte, yes. The master that owns as the one who gave him Toby. Mm -hmm. The guy refused. He said, No, I'm not Toby. My name is Kunta Kinte. I am from Africa. He started describing where he came from. It was the seventh generation of Hale Sali trace their root for the United States of America to Seni Gambia, mm -hmm. where the guy, today we call it Gambia, okay, where yeah, the guy yeah. was captured as a slave. That's the main reason why I tell people, please, let's make our African's name a first name for our children. What's your name, sir? Chigoze. Chigoze. Like now, God forbid, sir, mm -hmm. if you got lost in the heart of London, mm -hmm. and the only thing you could remember is that just name, yeah. Chigoze. They know where you come from. That name will bring you to Africa. Mm -hmm. Not even Africa. To Nigeria. Yeah. Not even Nigeria. Ibo to Land. Ibo Land. Yeah. That tell how powerful our name. name is. That's why the guy refused. I'm Kunta Kinte. I'm from. I'm, I'm not Kunta. Kinte. My name is Kunta Kinte. I'm from Africa. So it's when they trace it, it was that name that prompted that movie, The Root, because Alexali traced their root down to Gambia, to then Senegambia, Gambia. They met with the family, and they made that beautiful movie title, The Road. And along the line, any slave that refused. Accepting this name must be struck to death. If a slave died, no case because they are being referred to property. Forgetting that we Africans, we are not property, we are human beings. Yeah. Now, this is another matchbox mm -hmm. where the man kept most of his document, and these are some of the bricks that they use in the construction. This company yeah, we call the bricks bond bricks. You can see that it's so thick. Yeah, it's thick. You can see how it is. Yeah, that's a rock yeah. clay made of clay. Okay, let's come. Now, oh, yeah, this is our day. Oh, I different from today. Now, see what we use today mm -hmm. now yeah. in Africa. Yeah. Uh, now, look at it. Let me see. Let me show you something. Look at it. No, it's very easy. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
So you get 20 of this, like I'm from this, yeah. and the that they use for the roofing of that time. I am one kid in the Chinese movie, you see, they even um, fight on top of the roof because they, uh, because they, the roof they, is so very thick. You can't fight on top of this. Uh, like one. Uh, uh, they will drop them. <laughs> now, look at this chair. Mm -hmm. This will be the man's realization chair, then the Seriki, and some of his children over here. Now, let's turn around. Now, this is another sad memory. They call this thing a gallo. Mm. Or in the plantation where they work, if there's a tree in the plantation. Yeah. So they use, if you remember while we were in the first cell, I introduced a chain to you over the wall and the wall is show glass, mm -hmm. okay, show glass rather. They will tie this around the ribs of the men, the hand at the back, the women to one up, they'll be hung on gallo. And while other slave busy working, they're washing their brother. And sister dying gradually they are trying to instill in fear into other slaves that if you fuck up this is what will happen to you yes. even though some of the slaves they will set them ablaze they put fire on them while other slaves sit aside or mm. stand aside and wash they are trying to instill in to create fear into them some of them were set on fire they beheaded some of them in front of other slaves they are just trying to calm them down without knowing that they are building it up because a wounded lion, they are just like a wounded lion. Mm -hmm. So all those things that they are doing to them, they are giving them a, a kind of lion heart that made them to revolt. Later I'll be telling you more about the revolt that happened. Okay. Now, like this one happened in Dominican Republic okay. around 1791. And based on what's happening in the Republic of uh, uh, what they call IT then, okay, Dominican IT, Republic then, yeah. August 25, no, August 23rd, rather, August 23rd was set aside by UNESCO as the day of remembrance of the slave trade mm. and its abolition based on what happened in Haiti. Yeah. When the slaves were being led by a man called Tuzent, Louvertures of Haiti, the massacre, they killed all the whites in Haiti, they got their independence. Bits. They should be the first um, Caribbean country to have um, independence, right? Uh -huh. Independence. Yeah, right? should be yeah, it. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's it. So they keep on revolting. They kill their master's wife, kill their children, kill everybody. But later, they got their independence. They got their independence. But later, the French came back to them that they should pay damages mm -hmm. for killing their people. Since you guys have gotten your independence. independence yes. If you don't want us to re-enslave you, you gotta pay us. We call it reparation for cleaning mm -hmm. people. Yes. And they now said they should borrow money from their hand to pay them later. Mm. They'll be paying them back. Yeah. And which Haiti did. And some said Haiti we are still paying up to the I don't know how true this is that mm -hmm. I've never traveled down to Haiti, really. Some say they pay for it. Some say they are still paying. Mm -hmm. But for me, they are still paying. Ask me why. Why? Because most of the colony that French colonized today in Africa, mm -hmm. we are still paying colonial taxes mm -hmm. up to date to those people. And to me, what this is what I used to tell people. It's like a slap. I'm just imagine after somebody invaded my land, yep. took me away as a slave, forced mm -hmm. me away as a slave, and we are still paying Pain. them. And I used to tell people that if there's any document that our leaders, African leaders, have assigned, mm -hmm. That still making us up to date to be in slavery because there's a modern slave still going yeah. on. They should teach the children right from the car. Let us know from the beginning because those children will be the one that will fight for this great continent called mm -hmm. Africa. Mm -hmm. Because they have to teach them all these things. If there's anything that they have signed. Because to me, for you to leave your territorial arena without being invited, because we didn't invite them invited, to come. Yeah. They came and took us away as a slave. It's a crime of its own. Yeah. Good. Now. This one, this is what we call uh, when the slave got freedom. You understand? Mm. They started jubilating for getting freedom. You understand? Mm -hmm. So it's like a kind of joy to be free. Yeah. You understand? Now, look at that smaller window. 
we still give another 40 enslaved African a ventilation yeah. inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, let's keep on on the freedom thing. Now, when people come around here, I used to tell them that me, as far as I'm concerned, I have no hatred toward the white man, mm -hmm. nor the black man. Oh. I believe that among the whites, we had good and bad yeah. people. Yes. And among the blacks, we, we had good, good and, and bad people. Yeah. There's a man called John Brown. John Brown was hung on gallow by the American government because they call him nigger lover. What he does, he go into the plantation, set the slavery, set, kill the owner of the plantation, set them the houses, fire, recruit the slave, give them another, give them gone. They are moving from one plantation to other, get to set the slave free. He was sentenced on gallow to death by the American government. But there's a man called William Weaver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Weaver. John Brown. We have the Olada Iguano. Had a top man, Nani of Ghana, yeah, just name it. To Nathana, just like uh, that is something. A lot of them, many names like that. They keep on pressurizing that no, we want freedom. These black people, they are human beings like us. They are not soft. You know, when someone saw you, they soft. They say we have no soul. They say it's a lie. These people, they are human beings like us. We must put stop, put stop to this abnormal trade and keep on reporting. And the British have no choice. They just have to put stop to the abnormal trade. When they put stop to the trade, the slaves here were tribulating for freedom, and there's nothing so beautiful to be a free man. Now, now we are about going out. Let me see. Okay. Now, well, let me talk about this. Let me talk a little about the picture. Look at. Okay, look at this picture. This is Santo Silva. We call them returning mm. after the abolition of this. After the abolition of the slave trade. Most of our brothers there, some of them, because the slave trade lasted for 400 yes. years. Now, but the first slave trade that a lot of people don't even talk about, it's worse than so-called trans-Atlantic slave trade, trade yeah. began by the Portuguese, by man called Prince Henry Navigator in the 15th century. But later, the English joined the trade. Then the first slave ship, ship is being named Jesus of Lubeck, or good ship, Jesus of by King Henry of England. But later, Queen Elizabeth I rented it out to John Hawkins, mm -hmm. one of the slave as later to, they started taking African away as a slave. So, now, the one that, the worst one started by the Arabs. Yeah, I know. That one started in the 7th century mm -hmm. by the jihadists. The jihadists, yes. And it's later for 17th century. So check Egypt, out the yeah, Egypt, Tunisia, Morocco, Libya, that you see today, or Algeria, Algeria owned by the blacks. I know, it's our land. They call them the Kush, the Nubian, the Kamites mm -hmm. that live along that. Land. The first pharaoh menace was a black man, but today if we get to Egypt, you see that the white ruling. Uh, what happened to the aborigines? They used the edge of the sword to slaughter majority of those blacks. That's where they were ruling up to the before in the 15th century. The trans-Atlantic slave trade that started by the Portuguese came up as well and they started taking over. And the movement is known as Middle Percy, taking mm -hmm. African away as slaves, known as Middle Percy. Now, we are going out to see where this man was buried, Seriki Williams Safar. Okay. So, and he returned. You know, I told him the slavery because it started in some century. So, mm -hmm. people, you know, a century passed, another century, another century. So people keep on doing the trade mm -hmm. till 18th century. century yeah. So those that left earlier, some of them can still trace Crazy back their road. Yeah, yeah. So some of them return. Mm -hmm. Even though when the British put stop to the trade, some of them were being taken to Syria alone. alone. Wow. You understand? Mm -hmm. So they are there up to the recording return needs. Mm -hmm. Now, there's another man I will be showing you outside. This is another, okay, good. This is another returning. You can see. She Darosia. Mm. Though Darosia forefather were being the one that big capture as a slave. Mm -hmm. He was born into the plantation. So a child of a slave is also a slave. A slave yes. You understand? So when they put salt to the trade, the young man traced his route back to Lagos Island and see houses and family in Lagos Island, uh, Island up till date. Mm -hmm. And then he was thinking rich. He gives out money to people, you know, 
give money, do a lot of things, charity works, you know. So, like there's this adage in Yoruba that a lot of people don't know. There's, you see, like, let's assume that I, I offer you a bottle of Coke mm -hmm. and you are still expressing me to complain with a uh, gala. Mm -hmm. You understand? I will ask you, I will come. To the Do you want to tell me to Darusha that spend money lavish yeah, or something yeah, like okay, that? Okay, so it's okay. popular money in Europe. They are all returning. We have the Williams, oh, the okay, Silver, Cocas. Yes. Okay. You have the Cocas. Just name the Smiths. Mm -hmm. They are all returning. The Silver and Coke. Now, we are going to see. We have this one. Was very, this one done. So. Now, this is the extension of the compound. You know, actually, we have 40 rooms in this compound. Mm -hmm. 40, 40 slaves in each of them. That's a minimum of 1,600 of them. We have been moved from the compound to the point of no return. Look up there. Look at those bricks that I show you inside the museum, where we are in the museum. Can you see those bricks? We call that brick burnt bricks. Those are the bricks that were used to build the compound. And in those days, then, it's not being plastered. You understand what I'm saying? You'll be seeing those bricks outside, red bricks. They use something like a clay to hold it together. Then, now, let's move. <laughs> now, this, this, now right? this is the remnant. The building where the man lives, Sirike about lives. The building collapsed in 1995 to be in 1947. Right now, let me take you to where this man was buried. Where the man was buried. Yeah. Yes. Let me take you where the man was buried. Okay. Now, over there. Used to be his court. Mm -hmm. Then, we are in fact, this judgment among the committee of that name. Uh, the chambers used to be his office at that time. The chambers are sick with high water. Now, this is where Sir Kiaba was buried when he died. We call this thing mausoleum. He died 11 June 19. Okay. Not too long ago. Yeah, not too long. Let's see. So, this, this is very man rest. It's very very Like a tomb. You say what? Like a tomb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a tomb. Was so let's see the last tomb beside in mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Um, the last tomb used to be the tomb of one of the sons. Saka Aja Winnen Sabra. He was born in 1913. Okay, born in 1913. Then 1987. Very beside. Oh, not too long ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, right from now, uh, we are. What about the grand kings and all that? Yeah, look at those people going. Those are the. Yeah. We have the great great grand uh, working living here. All these children you are seeing. That all the building. Oh, uh, let's go through this side so we see the another room. <laughs> ブルーベンジェンスまだボイボキングでやるサービスクイズクイズランチェルオッケーオーディスモーでアウトセットノットウィディスタンドドアウィンドウィンドアシュイオッケーロカディスモーウィンドですこんにちはオッケーロカディス
This is how they transport slaves from the Brazilian Barracoon on canoes to the island, where they will match on foot with chains to the point of no return, where the slave cargo ships awaits. Welcome to the island. So, this is a Jeep Black. Wow. A friend of mine, right. the man that lives in the jungle, mm -hmm. make money in the jungle, <laughs> live with the monkeys, <laughs> my son, just name it. So, as you can see, he uses coconut for his craft work. This is a coconut box. Bottle water, coconut bottle water, as you can see. And we have beans, like the beads. Okay, we are see, before we come by, you see those beads that you talk about, okay, yeah, something yeah, like this. Yes. And you can see coconut bowl. bowl. See the spoon, coconut spoon. You know, so beautiful. How much is that? The bowl and the spoon. Yeah. Yeah. This, uh, this is not the point of no return. Mm -hmm. This is better for island. Better for me, isolate land, a dry land, mm -hmm. a land that nobody leaves during the state era. Mm -hmm. But today you can see people all around here. We have like three villages on this island. Yeah. We have some of our brother from Togo and Ghana. We call that and they are main occupation is fishing on the Atlantic Ocean. Right. We also have some from one of the states in Nigeria called Ondo State. Mm -hmm. We call them Ilages. They to do fishing on the Atlantic Ocean. And while they are boraging, the Badagi guys live along this coast. We see our houses in there. Mm -hmm. So now, and the main reason why we are here, we are here to create history. Because we will be walking on the same route that slave war for 400 years. And this is the route of the journey to unknown, call that unknown destination. Why do they call it unknown? Because the slave don't even know if there's any country called America, Europe. They don't even know where they're taking them to. So it's unknown to them. So you're welcome. Now, we are going to create history walking on the same route that slave was for 400 years. So, we are working freely. Freely. Not in shackle. So, like 50 of slaves, 50 of them will be on the line. Their hand being tied at the back while they walk. Yeah. So, if mistakenly, if one slave dropped, dropped down, like 20 have to follow, you know, because of the chain, you know, yes. then they have to whip them up again. They come out with a whip. And along the line, you know, some of them we are just being branded, writing the name of the owner on their body. So the heaviness of the chain, the heat with the sunlight, just imagine the text, the chain, I uh, you know, absorb heat from the sunlight wave. So, you know, they, are, they used to put a kind of a mark around their neck like this. Mm -hmm. It's like, boom, around their neck. And... It's like this narrow one, right? No, no, that, 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 that one, yeah. yes. Now, you can see how wide the pathway the of the point of no return. This is the path, this is the route. Mm -hmm. It's not as wide as what we are seeing here. Okay. And today, most of those big trees are being chopped down by the people that live here. Mm -hmm. It used to be thicker than this, okay. what you are seeing today. And with like a, a forest. Of, like a, yeah, good. Or oh, let me use the word jungle. Jungle. Because okay. then we have wide animals here. Oh, then, you know, right, right, right. So it's just like a path like this. Look at it. Just the straight path. Then, there before, a lot of Car, park, everything park, trucks, mm -hmm. the roads keep on expanding. expanding. So let's continue our journey. It takes the slaves about one hour walk on foot to get to the point of no return. My, one of my best friends. The whole Africa we are being raided. Right. Because you know the first slave trade as uh, the trunk, Sarah slave trade now yeah. have begun in the northern yeah. part, you understand, in the seventh century. So before the the Atlantic one, yeah, and the other so, yeah. So the slaves will meet a water spirit well halfway on their journey.
to the point of no return. Come together as people, one people, either black or white, mm -hmm. to make the war better for everybody. To I to live. Yeah, you understand? So, uh, a lot, there should not be a segregation. Yeah. We are one people. They should embrace us. We are people. We are human beings. Mm -hmm. We are not inferior. We are superior people. And history taught me that civilization began here. And mankind started this the this the land of the living. Mm -hmm. You understand? Now we are at the interval of the journey. Okay. I think um you can see slave spirit at to a nation where. Good. Abba. The well of forgetfulness. The slaves drink from the well before the journey of no return. The water in the well has some dark magic that made them to be calm at sea all through their journey, till get to their destination about four months before this development the slaves sometimes revolt at sea. But our own here is this well. Who do the well? Why do they have to do this well? Now we call the slave ship a cargo ship. A cargo ship would take like 100, 2, 3, 4, 500 slaves at a go. The crew, they were taking them away. They are no more than 25 to 30 people. They are taking like hundreds of slaves away. So, why taking a slave along the voyage, why they are going sometimes, if they spotted the land or if they have any opportunity, the slave utilizes it because they are already wounded lion. They are ready to devour. So, they will kill all the crew, the massacre. That means that will massacre. massacre. All the crew on board, but the only survivor is the captain. They won't kill the captain. You can see, you can say they are so wise. Yeah. Because they that's they why they made the well with they dark magic and forced the slaves to drink from it, so that they will always remain calm and forgetful until they get to the land of the unknown. Or your empire, mm -hmm. EA Fair. Just name it. Benin Empire. Benin. Yes, With their kings and ships. So anywhere they go to. If they realize that these people, they are well organized, they have soldiers, mm -hmm. they will go through our ships with those items that I show you. Even the like, Dalmans too. Yeah, down me, yeah, they probably, yeah, they probably got mm -hmm. They will give them those umbrella plates in a chain for the slave. Mm -hmm. But any community they go to, if they realize these people are just minority, mm -hmm. they invaded, they force them away as a slave. I think that's what happened in one Yoruba language uh, called Oshogun in Ishain, local government for your state, where one of the African big shops, somewhere like Jaikada, mm -hmm. was captured. So he came sleep. back, right? Yeah, he came back. back. Yeah, he came back and he translated the English Bible to Yoruba Bible. Bible. Same so, thing with, um, sorry, um, in Welcome to the point of no return. Thanks for watching. My name is Mr. Ezekiel Soteji Viabuno. Okay. I work for the Diocese of Adagri, Anglican Communion Church of Nigeria. I work for the church as a curator in charge of this story building. Okay. This story building built in 1845 by the missionaries, by the CMS missionary from England, mm. who arrived at Adagri on the 17th December 1842. A man who led the CMS Church in Nigeria called Reverend Henry Townsend, who landed on the 17th December 1842. He built a story building after they celebrated the first Christmas under a tree called Agia Tree. Where is Agia Tree? Agia Tree is no more standing, okay. but we have a monument date for the tree now because the tree is no more standing. So Townsend told us that he built the story building, which is the wooden story building was built in 1843. But later, the data saying he won Reverend to come and assist Townsend, that is Reverend Goman. But when Goman coming to Nigeria, he shipped materials from England and the materials supplied by Sheffield Department mm -hmm. in England, supplying the, the burnt bricks that was used to convert the wooden story building to bricks. 
and also supplying them the engines to mount the door since 1842. Oh, so heavy. And this is the bricks was used for the foundation of the building. Mm. And this is the iron corrugator sheet used for the roofing of this story yeah. building. Okay. These materials all brought from England for the building of this house. You also seeing the nails. You can see the thickness of the nails yeah. since 1842. Then we seen the we seen the very one, the one that we made now, mm -hmm. which yeah. we can compare the two materials yeah. together. And that is the materials mm -hmm. were brought from England. But most of those wood that the white missionary used and to build this house, those woods was getting from here, but they take it to the England, mm -hmm. treat it and brought it and back, brought it back. Okay. to Africa to build this house. And that is the wood that we use for the decking and the, for the partition okay. of the rooms. But we also see the geographical architectures map as at 1843. There's so many houses that the missionary built in this compound here. And this compound, this is just a landscape of mm. the compound, how it was look like. This is a fence of the missionary fencing out. And these are their building inside of this compound. Mm. Not only one building built in this compound, because this very one that we are seeing now, is the one in the center, the center okay. why the church were built at the back and mm -hmm. so many houses were built at this side and this one like this farm too. yeah like this is the farmland farm. of the missionary okay. so but all this building built in this compound it was wood that the missionary used to build, build those yeah. houses but all the houses collapsed except only this very one we that converted one, yeah. to bricks, to bricks that's, okay. that's one is still standing yeah. so the farmland in front of this water here mm. so uh the government have taken the land from the church now so government why? are trying to build uh some house there but which is a abandoned project now yeah, going on by the yeah. lagos state government yeah. so then if you're looking at the farmland there's an entrance in the middle of the farmland because they have vegetable garden rice mm -hmm. garden mm -hmm. so there's a there's a just a like entrance to the water to so people to get access to the water to fish mm -hmm. and that's the entrance place where they also match people put people into the boat take them to the island called the point of no return, return. Okay. but we're going to we have six bedrooms so now sorry to cut you right so that means even the missionaries too we are slave traders if that's what you're saying like because taking people from um, to point of no return that means kind of slavery they are not taking people to the point of no return it was the portuguese the brazilian the germans use their entrance place because they have the route where they also pass to put people into the boat and right. take them to the point of no the, return. The point of so no that return. means this is like a, a trade route a trade house a yes. trade route okay that yes. means In both missionaries and yes. slave um yes slave, they, um, they came through the same route okay the same route okay, okay, same okay, route. okay. so and we have six bedroom inside of this building okay we have two sitting room inside of this building and we have four stores inside of this building but we discover no toilet inside of this building no kitchen inside of this building and no bedroom inside of this building kitchen toilet and bedroom actually built outside Okay. So we are going to see in the breakdown of houses that the missionary built in this compound. They also liberated and number those houses down. Okay. We're going to see it and we're also going to see in the total amount of money. The cost total amount of money used to build this three building okay. is 325 pounds. Hmm. Okay, I see. Oh, right. but that's a whole lot of money back yes. in the days, yeah. So Okay. This is total amounts of, of money, money that the missionary used and to build this house. Yeah. Three hundred and twenty-five pounds is total amount of money that the Reverend Bowman used and to convert the wooden structure before mm -hmm. to change it to bricks. To one. brick, yeah. So it was three hundred and twenty-five pounds used and to build this house. This is the breakdown of houses built in this compound: the okay. church, mission house, kitchen. kitchen schoolmaster mm -hmm. dwelling boarding schools laborers dwelling wall interpreters house watchman dwelling shelter and capital shop window shelter street vegetable mm -hmm. garden rice garden and stables all those buildings built in this compound but all the buildings have gone mm -hmm. so except only this very one standing which is the a mission, mission house. house the mission house total amount of money used to build the mission house is 325 pounds now inside of this room, inside of this building, we're going to see in the room of the first teacher. That is the man who teach uh, people how to read and how to write. Right. But the man was appointed by the missionary. 
So missionary told the man to teach only men in mm. primary school. Mm. Let's see the room of the mm. teacher. Let's see. So this is the room of the first Western teacher, teacher. Mr. Claudius Phillips, mm. is the first teacher in Nigeria. So this man, and that's a picture of the man, the man was appointed to teach only men in primary school. Only men. But okay. you can see, the school started with a woman of the 40, 40 men. Men. men who started the primary school, they started primary school at the age of 45 years as students mm. to start their primary school. That's the youngest in class. The oldest in class started at the age of 58 years. And this man told us that the, those 40 men, that there are... There's each, each one of them spent 12 years in primary school to finish primary school because it was so difficult for him to communicate yeah, with, with them, teachers and yeah, for them yeah, to yeah, write exactly. and to read. Yeah. So that is the school they attend. I mean, those 40 men, that's the school that all of them attend. Okay, that's the okay. first primary schools in Nigeria. Nigeria. So that's true that inside of this building, not only the missionaries that we're going to talk about, that we're talking about the Western education okay. because they are the ones also introduced the Western education to all so upstairs we are going to see the rooms where Ajayi Krada sat down and changed English Bible into yeah, Yoruba. Yoruba right. But before we go upstairs, we are going to talk about the tree where the gospel started, okay. which is the tree called Agia, Agia tree, tree in the Bible. Okay. This is the Agia tree in Badagri, called the historical Agia mm. tree. And you can see what they wrote here. Under this tree, Christianity was first proclaimed. In Nigeria in September 1842 and the first Christmas was first celebrated in December 1842 so when gospel started in Nigeria first started under this Hagia tree when Christmas celebrated first celebrated under the Hagia tree but the Hagia tree that we're talking about today so the tree is no more standing the Hagia tree fell in Badagi on the 20 June 1959 mm -hmm. I think a year to our own independence, independence so, yeah. yes so the tree fell but well, according to the history of our forefathers, we have been told that the tree stand for 350 years before the Agia tree fell. Wow. So going there now to see the tree, you won't be able to see the tree, but you see a monument that replacing the falling of the tree. And this is the pictures of the monument of the Hagia tree in Badagi. Reverend Thomas Bech Freeman and Reverend Harry Townsend mm -hmm. are the two Reverend missionary preaching gospel under the tree. And celebrated Christmas together under the tree, the tree. on the 25th December 1842. And the tree fell on the 20th June 1959, placed with the monument. So, Townsend, one of the reverend from CMS that preached gospel, to make a comment about the building. So, Townsend said the house is strong and com very comfortable during the erection. Many persons have come to see it, especially of the single room. It being the first I've ever seen. Townsend, because the witness went. The missionaries started building this house mm. so the man he gave his own comment about this building to people about the story building then this is the name of the reverend missionary building the story building reverend c a goma goma building the story building in 1845 and this is the picture of the christmas celebrated in badagri in 1923 not the one celebrated by the missionary yeah but this one celebrated by a company in badagri the name of the company called the african or in Northern Company, Milan's brothers. Yeah. Milan's brothers are the ones who sit on the bench wearing the white clothes. But you see some Africans not wearing clothes standing at the back of those white men. So that is the staff of the company. So working for those white men. Mm -hmm. But when those white men want to subject the man, they called all their staff to stand at their back and they paint the body of those Africans. Mm -hmm. They wrote 1923 on their body. But that really on the body of those people, and Mary Hesmans was written on the body of those Africans. So this way happened in 1923. So that to show that slave trade have not end. And the yeah, so slavery yeah. is still, is still going on. Going but on. we are in the modern days what slavery is. So other rooms we have upstairs. We have two bedrooms upstairs, one sitting rooms upstairs, and four stops that we're going to see. All right. So one of the rooms, the bedroom, that's the room of the Bishop Samuel Ajayi Prada. We are going to see the where Ajayi Krada sat down and changed English Bible into Yoruba, Yoruba Bible. We go through this text. All right.
this is the Bible. The Bible, the white missionaries, mm. the CMA's missionary brought to this country on the 17th December 1842. This Bible is first King James Version. Yeah, 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 but yeah. when Townsend come into Nigeria, Townsend returned some of the free slaves that have trained under the missionary in England that have become a missionary. Mm. That's one of the black men here. That's a man called yeah, Bishop yeah. Samuel Lajai Krada. He was his slave, but he had, or he was trained by the missionary in England. They returned this man back to Nigeria because the missionary needed the help of this uh, Ajayi because he speaks so many languages. Mm -hmm. So he can communicate with people di different language. So the man returned back here and done the work of interpreter for those white those missionaries white missionary. and help them to change this English Bible into the local language called Yoruba, Yoruba. Bible. Yoruba. But the short story is about Ajayi. He was a slave. He was captured as a slave in Oyo State, in a village in Oyo State called Oshogun village in his same local government. Ajayi Kafro went during the war of uh, Oyo Empire and Fulani's Empire. The Fulani's Empire captured the village in Oyo Empire. That was the village of this man called Osho village. Later name is saying local government now. So Ajayi Kafro when he was age of 12 years. And that time there was no vehicle who can convene all of them from Oyo to Lagos, Badagi, because Badagi served as slave depot. Mm. From Badagi, they take slave out of but I export them to different yeah, countries. countries. So yeah. Ajayi and others have to trek from Oyo to Badagri. So you can see the distance from Oyo to Badagri. So many of them died on their way on coming their way here. Coming so here. Ajayi survived and it was age of was age of 12 years old years boy old, yes. that was took as a slave then. So when Ajayi get to Badagri, Ajayi was the because it was it belonged to the children. Yeah. It was the category of the children. They used Ajayi as a trade bonus because children were not sold. Into slavery, children were given to them as bonus. as bonus. So they use Ajay as bonus to the Portuguese. So Ajay were taken out when the ship of the Portuguese left Badagri, taking all of them to Portugal. The British Navy, that time, they have stopped slavery in 1807. They didn't allow the ship of the to Portuguese go to go through. Yeah. They returned the ship of the Portuguese back to Africa. Africa. For instead of the ship to return them back to slave coast, that's Nigeria. Yeah. The, the ship returned them, dumped them as free town. Oh, in Sierra Leone. I remember so that. So Ajayi were dumped there, yeah. and that's the present uh, university in Sierra Leone now. That's a Fort Abbey College. So Ajayi attained the school and finished from this school. But this is a man who were trained Ajayi at Sierra Leone. That's a man called Crowder. Crowder no. He's a white man, he's a missionary. So Ajayi had to be his name. What? His, name. his name. So the man was one who baptized Ajayi. And name Ajayi was Samuel. Samuel. So after Ajayi finished from this school, all of them take to England. They went to school of geology in England and become a priest, a reverend. Mm -hmm. But from Church of Canterbury, where Ajayi Kada were posted, so thousand coming from Church of Canterbury to Nigeria to come and preach gospel, they returned Ajayi back home, and Ajayi were doing work of interpreter for thousand. So this is a book shed of Ajayi, and this is where he hanging his own garbage there. Okay, yes, that's where he hangs his hands, those yeah. guys. So, but we see the picture of a young man who stands at the back of Ajayi on these pictures. The young man actually worked with Ajayi when Ajayi we actually was ordained as a first African bishop. bishop. So, this young man is named called Reverend Babington Macaulay, who was the first chaplain of the bishop called Ajayi. So, but the young man later became the in law to Ajayi, he married to Ajayi's daughter. Ajayi daughter who married to this young man here and gave birth to a man called Abbott Macaulay. Macaulay. Yeah. That is the man of one era coins. coins. And that's the man who happened to be the grandson of Bishop Samuel Bishop Ajayi, Ajayi Crowder. Crowder. That's just the stories that we have for Ajayi Crowder in this room. It was a year that they need to call our chiefs and our king in Badagi that they need to sign the letter of the treat of the abolition of the slave trade in Badagri with the chief in Badagri. So the chief in Badagri will sign, we have the King Memu of King Memu of Badagri, mm -hmm. we have Alakpa of Alakpa, we have Sumbu of Sumbu, we have uh, Wawu of Badagri. So those people, they are just like a king, but they call them the white calf sheep. Mm -hmm. Those people sign letter of the treaty of the abolition of slavery with missionaries. And Goldman also witnesses, and J. Martins also witnessed those who signed that time, the letter of the abolition of slavery in March 18, 1852. But those are signed letters, they're also going back that business because of what they were benefit in slavery. Because giving them the gun, umbrella, packet of matches, spoons, and all the other things were given to them. They benefit those things where they, they, our people benefited. Yeah. So they continued doing the trade. 
with those Portuguese, Americans, Brazilian, Germans, and all set to Nibadagri. But these are missionary that brought Christianity to Nigeria, or uh, introduced Christianity to us, mm -hmm. and that's the man called Reverend Thomas Brecht Freeman, who landed on the 24th September 1842. That's a man from Methodist. He was a man who sowed the seed of the Christianity in Badagri in Nigeria, Nigeria in 1842. Following by this man who arrived in 1842, Joined arms with Reverend Thomas Bech Freeman, and both of them celebrated the first Christmas yes. service together under what the, the Agia tree. tree. That's the man from CMS called Aglican. So, this is the man who built the story building in 1845. That's the man called Reverend C.A. Government, building the story building in 1845. So, since 1845, this story building is standing, it's standing for over 178 years. This story building called the first story building in Nigeria built by the mm -hmm. missionaries from England. So that's the first CMS church built in 1843. And the church built by Reverend Henry Watt Townsend. Townsend. The church collapsed in 1911. And that's this chair since 1878. It's over 145 years old chair. Then we have the picture of the cemetery where those missionaries were buried. So once those missionaries died, they can take their body back right. to England. England. So a majority of them died with malaria. But people write different stories about Badagri is because of the politics or non-politics. Yeah. They said Badagri is a bad agreement or because they were not supporting the government that on. So now people write different stories. But Badagri was not a bad agreement. These people died with malaria. malaria. Once mosquitoes by them, there was no vaccine to treat. Them. So majority of those missionaries died. 240 of the missionaries died and buried in Badagri. That is the picture of the cemetery. Lastly, we have the saving bank where the missionary kept money. There's a lot of money. The olden days currency that we have inside of these saves. So this save was established 1856. And this is the money that we have inside of it. Yes. So we have some calories. That's the money that people spend. Yes. So they have to first of all eat the animal inside. And this will turn to the money. Mm. So after the British came and introduced this type of this money to us, that's the one penny. They introduced half penny. They introduced one shilling and one pound. All this money introduced to us by the British. Later, we changed from this British money and we changed to Naira and Cobble. What year we started spending our own Cobble? We started spending one Cobble in 1973. After one Cobble, we have half Cobble, mm. five Cobble, ten Cobble. 25 Cobo, 50 Cobo, Two and nine. 1 Naira. So nine. all those coins that we have, all those money Two here. Nine. So later we change that from coins sense. money. We change to the note money. note money. This is the note money. We have old 1 Naira note. We have old 1 Naira note. That's a man called Aban. Not not only. Only. Yeah. And we also have the old of 50 Cobo note. Yeah. This is the old of 50 Cobo note. And this is the hold of five Naira notes. Then this is another hold of 50 Cobo notes. Then this is the hold of 20 Naira notes. Yeah. Hold of 20 I mean, Naira notes. And this is the new of 20 Naira notes. Mm. New of 20 Naira notes. Then this is another hold of 50, 50 Naira, Naira notes. Then this is the uh, new of uh, five naira notes naira which note. was changed to polymer now yeah we have old of five naira notes here which is a old of yeah, five naira notes and these are the ten naira which is or uh, new and old yeah so then so these are money that we have inside of this safe the reason why we're showing people about this money is because we want to educate some of our people about our currency that mm. we change in nigeria so we want to educate them about our currency money so that is the money that we have inside of this safe to educate our people about this currency that we spend in Nigeria. So uh, that's what we have inside of the story building. So, yeah. so lastly, we're going to talking about the well, the well that dug in 1842. That is the well of the missionaries. So this, so this is the well dug in 1842. The well was dug by the missionary in 1842. This well water, it have never run it dry since 1842. Okay. And it have never changed color since 1842. Yeah. People live in this community, they make use of this water as drinkable water because it is the only well water 
that is clean and tasteless in this badagi was dug by the missionary in 1842. Yeah. Sorry, what about the point of no return? There's a well they normally drink when they're taking slaves. To yes, that one is down. across of the water. Yeah, that you are going to see that one. Yeah, but, but that one is clean too. That one is not clean. Okay, yeah, okay. It's because the reason why I say that is what the, the, the water was not clean. Yes, yeah. 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 That's just to, just to receive it. Yeah. So that is all what we have here. Yeah. So thank you. That's the waters for the miracle well brought by the Krishna in the So this is the miracle well. well. Yeah. So uh, once again, I have to tell you again that my name is Mr. Ezekiel Sotegi Viaboni. I work for the Dallas of Adagi, yeah. Adlekan Covidian Church of Nigeria. I work for the church as the curator in charge of the story building built by the CMS missionary in 1835. Thank you very much for coming.